Greetings everybody and welcome to my first cooking video in my new house in Newcastle. Um, the kitchen is in. I think it's going to be fantastic. I'm still working out the details um, and having a blast doing so. Um, and the other thing I'm having a blast with are the farmers markets in Durham. There's um, Price's Country Market is just up the road from me and I pass by, I've passed by so many I don't have time to stop. Um, but I am sure that shopping in this area of the province of Ontario is going to be fruitful and fantastic. Today we are, I'm going to make, and I'm going to show you how to make, um, kakaliki chicken soup. It's a Scottish recipe for chicken soup. Um, the cock refers, of course, to the chicken broth, and the leeks refer to the leeks. So it's kakaliki soup. It's, um, I did some research, and the earliest known published recipe for kakaliki is 18, I'm sorry, 1588, 1588. So we're looking at um, a soup recipe that's about a half of a century old. And the reason that it survived for half of a century is because it is um, delicious in taste and nutritious in composition. Everything in it is good for you. Um, low in fat, uh, high in protein, uh, high in minerals, thanks to uh, minerals and vitamins, thanks to the vegetables and the barley. And um, I don't know anybody that doesn't like it, that's ever eaten it and didn't like it. Um, there's nothing offensive in kakaliki soup as opposed to some other spicier or stronger flavors like French onion, which is delicious, but if you don't like onions, you're not going to eat it. Um, leeks are mild. They're a mild um, member of the onion family. And um, everything else in this is uh, delicious, but, you know, not offensive. So you can give it to kids. You can give it to old people. You can give, you know, serve it as a meal all by itself or a lunch all by itself. Um, really a great go-to recipe, kakaliki. It's a Scottish chicken soup. Now, um, the essentials in kakaliki are chicken broth, and it's any chicken broth. I made uh, chicken broth with legs and thighs, back attached. It's the least expensive cut of chicken you can buy and the best for soup. Um, you really want the bones, the back. You really want the bones for your broth. So I made the, um, the chicken broth leeks, obviously. Um, you might be wondering, because when you see leeks, they've got a long, um, a long green stem attached. Well, I chopped that off and put it into the stock. So the reason my leeks look so um, stubby is because what is not going to actually go into the soup, I cut it off and put it into the stock. So um, I would like to have more leeks. However, the farmer's market I was at, the farmer... The only farmer that had leeks only had three. So I'm just gonna make a small pot of soup today. So we've got the chicken broth, the leeks, and of course, barley. Some people um, make kakaliki only with potatoes. I can't even picture that. To me, it's not kakaliki if it doesn't have barley. Um, you can use, most people use pearl barley, which is smaller and has the husk removed. It cooks faster. Um, to me, it would be like comparing brown rice and white rice. Uh, pearl barley is um, polished and has less of the original barley. Pot barley is a little bit sturdier and hasn't had the husk removed. Um, I prefer pot barley myself. It has more of a, a bite, an al dente kind of a tooth to it. Um, and it still has all those uh, nutrition nutrients required that haven't been polished away. So the thing to know about barley though, um, when you're making kakaliki or any uh, anything that has barley in it, is that barley uh, will continue to absorb broth forever once you put it in the soup. So if you don't pre-cook the barley in water, which I'm definitely going to do, um, and you cook it in the broth, when you come back, there will be no broth. I mean, the barley will be delicious and it will have absorbed all the broth, but if you want soup and not, um, you know, like a kind of a stew you could cut with a knife and a fork, you need to pre-cook the barley. And some recipes even say, um, pre-cook the barley, and then just add as much barley to the pot as the soup you're going to eat in that sitting. Don't leave it sit in the fridge. So just keep it aside like you would do with um, rice noodles or something and only put it in as you're eating uh, the soup because otherwise the barley will absorb every bit of the broth um, that is in the soup. So I'm going to pre-cook it and I'll add a small amount and I might set some aside to add later, but I, I really do want to have broth in my soup. So um, if you've not cooked with barley before, be warned, it will soak up every bit of liquid in your pot um, between now and the next time you eat it. You'll come back and wonder where all the broth went. The barley absorbed it. So you, there's a couple of ways around that. Just put in a little bit. Definitely pre-cook it. And um, as some recipes suggest, only add it just as you're eating it. So that can help too. 
I'm going to peel a few carrots. Got those at the Newcastle Farmer's Market. They look beautiful. Um, some nice new fall Ontario potatoes, my favorite time of year. Um, some celery. Uh, uh, I might use one, maybe two. Maybe two, we'll see. One or two. I'm only making a small pot. Um, in terms of flavoring, I've got parsley from my garden, which I'm really excited about. I've actually got stuff growing here already, and I've only been here a week. Um, and if I had time growing, I would uh, use fresh thyme, but I don't have thyme growing. So I'm going to use dried thyme. Um, I would have rather had fresh, um, or I'd rather have whole, but actually all I have is ground. So I'm just going to add a small amount of ground thyme, um, thyme, T-H-Y-M-E. It's a very distinctive flavoring. Uh, French people from New Brunswick um, say that a soup without thyme is not worth eating. And as far as uh, kakaliki, French onion soups, there are some soup recipes that without thyme, they don't taste anything like they're supposed to. Um, so I'll be adding a bit of chopped parsley, add that right toward the end, um, some thyme to the vegetables, the leeks, the broth, and of course there's salt and pepper in the broth already. I'll see if um, it needs any more salt as it's cooking and uh, add that to adjust for taste toward the end. So that's the ingredients we're gonna use. Um, I've already taught you how to chop celery, how to chop carrots and potatoes. I will show you how to cut leeks and half moons. I'm gonna put some barley on to cook and uh, when we come back, we will assemble um, our most delicious kakaliki, one of the few soup recipes you can find uh, for half of a century in uh, Scottish publications. And there's a reason for that because it's fantastic. So the instructions on the pot barley um, are one cup of barley to three cups of water. You put the barley in the pan and add three cups of water and then bring it to a boil and let it simmer for 25 to 30 minutes. So that's a good amount of time. That's actually a fair amount of time to, um, that it's going to take to cook this barley. Um, and uh, then the results of that should be two cups of finished product, two cups of barley. We'll see if that works out to be uh, precisely as they've described. But um, I've got my one cup of water, sorry, one cup of barley with covered with three cups of water. I'm gonna put it on the stove and give it um, 25 to 30 minutes for the barley to absorb the water. And you know what, to be truthful, I might even, um, I might even add some more water or, or some chicken broth as it's cooking uh, because the barley has such a capacity to absorb liquid. Um, I wouldn't mind if maybe I added a bit of chicken broth if it, if it seemed to need more cooking to give the barley some flavor. And um, uh, that's going to go on the stove right now while I chop up the vegetables. The broth is already on heating and I'm going to say it's about mm, maybe about six or eight cups of chicken broth. Okay, just to give you a sense of the order of operations in terms of um, what goes into the pan first with soup, I'm going to put the carrots in first because they're hard. They take the longest to cook. Um, and when those are about semi-soft, I will add the celery and the potatoes um, and the leeks. The chicken will go in closer to the end and the parsley will go in at the very end so that um, the hard vegetables uh, cook uh, nicely, but the soft ones don't turn to mush in front of you. Okay. Okay, so the broth is cooking, the barley is cooking separately, the carrots are in with the broth. I'll add the potatoes and everything else in a moment, but I did want to show you just when a recipe calls for you to cut a leek into half moons, here's what they're saying. Normally leeks come with a big green end. I chopped those off and put them into the stock a couple of days ago. So what you're left with basically is your leeks and uh, bulb ends. If I had um, more leeks, I would use more leeks, but I got to the farmer's market uh, the farmer only had one bunch left and only had three leeks in it. So the moral to that story is you snooze, you lose. Um, <laughs> if you want enough leeks to make a giant pot of cockalicky, you have to get to the farmer's market early. Or your grocery store. You can buy leeks in the grocery store. I like to support farmers, though. Oh, they smell amazing. Just with that one cut of the knife, they already smell fantastic. So when someone tells you to cut a leek into half moons, what they mean is just cut the leek in half like that. We'll work with this one. It's a nice big one. Um, we're going to cut the leek, cut it in half, did that, and then just slice it like this. Okay. So that's a half moon. That's a leek cut into half moons in case you're 
wondering what the heck are they saying? What does this terminology mean in the recipe? Cut something into half moons. It's not a pastry or a chocolate pie. It's just going to be cut in um, half and then sliced like this. And then each of these little pieces will kind of fall apart in the pot. They don't stay in half moons. They come apart like layered onions because they are, in fact, part of the onion family. But they're lovely. They're pretty. They're a nice color. Look at the nice color. And in the soup, they're going to be beautiful. So now the carrots have been in for a moment, and I'm going to put um, the leeks in shortly after. They'll, you want those to cook nicely. They're, they're a little bit fibrous, um, and so you don't want to uh, you don't want to be serving them to your guests raw. And uh, we'll let those flavor the broth, and uh, that's going to be awesome. So that is how you cut a leek in half moons. Okay, just to give you a sense of the comparative cooking times, I put the chicken broth on and I added the carrots about oh, maybe 20 minutes ago. And about 10 minutes ago, I added the leeks. Um, I, almost a half of an hour ago, I put the barley on the stove with the three cups of water that the package told me to. And um, it, it was clearly not going to be cooked in that period of time with that amount of liquid. So I added some chicken broth, a cup or two of chicken broth. Now the barley is um, cooked almost dry and it's still pretty toothy. It's still pretty crunchy. So I'm going to add like another cup at least, maybe two cups of chicken broth to the barley. If um, I didn't have my own broth or, you know, I had run out of commercially prepared stock, which I actually do use the cartons. I, I find them quite good. Um, I, you could just add water. Like you don't have to be ever so fussy. Um, you could just add water to the barley, but I find the broth adds extra flavor. So over here, the carrots um, have been simmering for about 20 minutes, the leeks for about 10. I'm going to put the potatoes in shortly and the chicken with the potatoes. So those will take a little while to cook. And then hopefully by that time, the barley will have absorbed all the liquid it needs to in order to cook the barley. And then I'll put some into um, the kakaliki that I'm going to eat um, immediately. And I think I will reserve the rest of the barley just to put it into the soup when I'm going to eat it. Because um, I like broth with my soup and I don't want the barley to absorb every bit of broth that is in this soup. Um, so I'm going to add some more broth to the barley. I'm going to let the vegetables continue to cook. I'll add the potatoes, uh, the celery, um, the chicken. Toward the end, I'll end, add the parsley. And I will just uh, let you know that the, what, this combination smells fantastic. The time that I have put into um, the chicken broth and the broth itself and the leeks smell amazing. And um, I'm pretty confident this is going to be a really good soup. Okay, so I have added um, a cup of chicken broth to the barley, and now I'm going to add a second cup. So if you're keeping track, that means to one cup of pot barley, I added three cups of water and three cups of chicken broth. Um, and I'm not afraid about the barley not absorbing the broth because um, it will. Like if it doesn't do it now, it'll do it later in the fridge. So one cup of pot barley soaked up three cups of water. And now it's on its third cup of chicken broth. I'm going to put the potatoes in with the um, carrots and leeks. And in a moment, I'll add the chicken. A little bit later, I'll add the parsley. And we'll be almost there with kakaliki. Okay, the carrots and potatoes and leeks and broth are simmering away like crazy over here. I added the thyme. Some time ago, the barley is back here just absorbing all the liquid God will give it. Um, I'm going to put in the celery and the chicken. I'm going to say there's about three cups of chopped chicken here, and that came from the legs and thighs that cooked um, in the stock. Taste of white, because you could use that in sandwiches or salads or whatever else. And the, Dark meat um, is very tender and adds lots of flavor. So we're gonna let that continue to cook and we'll let the barley just simmer away at the back there. I'm not gonna add any more liquid to the barley. Six cups is enough, but um, uh, we'll see where we get to by the time the potatoes and the celery and everything are cooked here. And then I will add the parsley. Then the recipe will be done. We just need to mix some barley in um, with the soup we're gonna eat today and we will have kakaliki soup. Okay, everything is here that needs to be here. 
Carrots are well cooked. Potatoes are pretty mostly cooked. Celery's looking good. Chicken's looking good. Leeks smell fantastic. And now I am adding the fresh parsley that I trimmed, I snipped from my garden. And uh, we're just going to let this simmer for well, as many more minutes as is needed. Like if I was waiting for family to come home or whatever, maybe this would sit on the stove for <clears throat> an hour or more at a very low temperature. If I was hoping to eat it very soon, I'd let it keep simmering at a, at a pretty good rate and um, serve it right away. But um, this is going to be my dinner tonight. And when I get around to actually eating some of it, I'm going to... Um, Add the barley just as I'm ready to eat it and keep the barley separate from the soup because I've decided I don't want to have soup without broth. I'm not going to put all, I'm going to save the barley in a separate container and I will just add it as I'm heating it to eat it because um, I think that's going to be actually the best strategy. If you were serving one big pot to one big group of people all at one time, you'd put all the barley in and um, let the chips fall where they may, and everybody will love it. Young people, old people, athletic people, people on paleo diets, um, uh, people on high protein, you know, pretty much everybody can eat it as long as they know that there's barley in it. And, uh, uh, and, and you would put it all together in one big pot and just serve it, but because I'm gonna go at this kind of a portion at a time, um, I'm just going to put my barley in as I warm it up to eat it with each meal because I like broth in soup and I don't want the barley to drink up all the broth that is going to be there. So let's leave that simmer for a few more minutes and uh, when we come back we're going to have finished bowls of kakaliki soup. Alrighty. Ooh, this has been smelling good all morning while I'm working um, and I am going to proceed with putting some barley into my bowl. Now again, if I was serving the whole pot all at one time, I was confident it would be done um, when we all rose from the table. I would just put the barley right into the soup. But the barley will absorb every bit of the broth that comes in the soup. And I like broth in my soup, so um, I'm going to just leave it like that. I've got some barley, which has also been cooked in the chicken broth. The kakaliki, um, which is looking really good. I'm going to put just a little bit of pepper on mine because I like pepper in my soup. Um, you could, if you wanted, add a little sprig of fresh parsley before you sent it to the table. But um, that is a fantastic, nutritious bowl of soup um, that everyone can eat, uh, everyone that eats barley. And barley is fantastic for your digestion. Uh, boy, if you've ever had any, in any recipe, you know that... Um, uh, you're, you're going to be one of the most regular human beings on the planet if you eat barley on a regular basis. And as my mom used to love to point out, it's the only grain that contains every vitamin and every mineral that a human being needs. So um, if you're not getting your barley from beer, you could get it from kakaliki soup. So I have put some barley in the bowl. I put in the soup, which is looking really yummy and delicious. Um, I'm going to let it cool for a second. And that is going to be kakaliki soup. For you, your family, young and old, Scottish or not, um, there's a reason why a recipe would stick around for 500 years and uh, or half of a millennium, um, and that is because it's uh, fantastic and everyone loves it. So there you go, kakaliki soup. Um, I hope you will get some leeks at a farmer's market and some carrots and potatoes and celery and um, some very inexpensive chicken, some barley, and make a batch of your own. I don't think you'll regret it and enjoy. Um, try new things and have fun cooking for your family. Be confident in the kitchen. It's Rita Smith, the number one food fairy, wishing you well and enjoy yourself. I'm so sick of reality TV. I'm so tired of my girlfriend.